for today and I will talk about Apache Impala. It's a quick start guide so we will walk through the history of Apache Impala. We will check the ecosystem and how uh, different components of uh, Impala connect to each other. And we will walk through the architecture and we will see a small uh, demo about the features, the latest features that uh, Impala supports. So let's start. Uh, this uh, small introduction, uh, somebody already said, I worked uh, at Cloudera since 2020 and I'm an Apache Impala contributor since 2022. So I worked on various parts of the uh, project, uh, mainly on the uh, user-defined function handling and on the uh, type system. And in the latest chapter, I started to work on uh, the integration uh, of uh, Apache Iceberg into uh, Apache Impala. So the small history of Apache Impala, the first beta version released in 2012, and it was uh, managed by Cloudera. So uh, Apache Impala or Impala itself was a product of uh, Cloudera, and it was uh, mainly uh, influenced by Google's F1 and Dremel. The uh, scope for, for this project is to create an open source uh, alternative for uh, Google's products. And uh, later on, uh, the the project itself was donated to the Apache Software Foundation, and uh, the uh, project, the Apache Impala, uh, became the top level project since 2017. And uh, uh, since then, uh, we released a lot of versions. The our latest version is uh, released in this month. This is 4.3.0. Uh, so, uh, Apache Impala. Uh, or Impala uh, was renamed in the donation process. So before it, uh, it can be searched through Google as uh, Cloudera Impala, but now it's called Apache Impala. And the project itself is located on uh, Garrett. Uh, here's the link where the project is uh, reachable. Uh, we track the issues through the Apache Jira, and we have a read-only uh, copy on GitHub, um, and you can see the link here. So what, what are the goals of uh, Apache Impala? Uh, Impala is a low latency and high concurrency uh, business intelligence or analytic uh, MPP engine, a massive parallel processing engine, and it's uh, mainly uh, engineered for reads, but Impala also can write uh, data files. Impala is uh, working with uh, SQL queries, so we have uh, complete SQL uh, support. And these uh, SQL-based queries are translated to uh, job uh, uh, queries, uh, query plans, which are executed on uh, Apache Hadoop in the classic, uh, classic setup. Apache Impala is uh, highly scalable, so we have highly scalable architecture. The components it's, uh, itself are uh, separated into different daemon processes and it can uh, because uh, the uh, responsibilities are split uh, every uh, aspect of the the cluster can be scaled uh, independently and the uh, main uh, speed boost or the main advantage uh, that we can uh, use of is the uh, data locality of the Apache Hadoop cluster so in the classical setup uh, every uh, data node that the, the underlying data node has an Apache Impala daemon which can read the data locally and we can uh, avoid the network costs. So about the ecosystem, this is a high level view and uh, you can see that the SQL up or ODBC or JDBC connection how it connects to the Impala cluster. We have numbered uh, lines and we can see that the uh, SQL query first lands in the query coordinator. The query coordinator passes the uh, query to the query planner and uh, the query planner returns the uh, execution plan back to the query coordinator and the executors uh, ran the query fragments and the uh, plan nodes. The query coordinator itself, itself fans out the uh, fragments to multiple executors in this uh, picture, we can see that every Impala daemon has uh, a shared role. So uh, every Impala daemon contains a coordinator, the planner, and the executor. It can be configured differently for uh, bigger uh, setups. 
Uh, as you can see, the data layer itself is uh, consists of HDF and data nodes in this case, but Impala can work on various other uh, Hadoop supported uh, data stores as well. And uh, we have two other components, the state store daemon and the catalog daemon. I will talk about them uh, later. So let's see the responsibilities. Uh, <clears throat> Impala uses daemon processes as I uh, already mentioned. Uh, these are uh, background running tasks uh, on, on uh, nodes and uh, Impala uh, daemon itself uh, is uh, responsible for query coordination and execution. And the state store is uh, responsible for the cluster with state sharing. Catalog is handling the metadata and connects the external metadata service. And the admission daemon uh, is responsible for resource handling. Uh, about the uh, communication inside the cluster. So we have two modes or two RPC modes for uh, for communication. The first one, the Drift RPC, is uh, the legacy way of uh, the communication. It preps the uh, Hive server to protocol. So the Hive server protocol itself can travel through uh, Drift uh, objects and it can travel on HTTP and HTTPS. And the Drift RPC itself is not really used uh, in uh, the latest versions. In the older versions, uh, we had a, a mode for uh, connection where we uh, connected every query fragments to uh, each other. And we can see in the upper image that uh, in three hosts with four fragments, a lot of connections, uh, a lot of TCP connections are uh, drawn between each uh, fragments. A query fragment itself is a part of a, a query. So when we plan the query, we have a, a bunch of query fragments and these query fragments are the uh, separate ways of how we can uh, 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 distribute the, the query execution in, in a, uh, to, uh, between the clusters. So it's a distributed manner of splitting the uh, tasks in a query plan. So uh, in uh, 2018, we, we had a choice to uh, use a new kind of RPC and uh, Apache Impala uh, PMCs choose the way to use Kudu RPC as the next generation uh, of RPC. We can see in the lower uh, example, the lower image that uh, with Kudu RPC, we have only two uh, connections between each hosts and the internal communication happens on the uh, loopback interface. So Kudu RPC itself has the uh, properties of uh, being uh, asynchronous and has uh, has multiplexed uh, connections and it's way more uh, mm, performant than the previous strict uh, solution. And uh, we can see the big O notations for the strict uh, solution and for the Kudu solution as well. So we removed one, uh, one uh, part from the uh, big O notation and uh, this, uh, this uh, migration or this uh, implementation of Kudu RPC solved a lot of scalability problems. Uh, in Apache Impala and give it a new boost. Uh, about the Drift RPC, uh, we also use it in uh, the latest versions, but in a non-performance uh, critical parts. So for example, the client communication is uh, running through Drift RPC. It's uh, mainly important because the HS2 protocol is uh, used for uh, for the first class client communication. And in, for example, Impala Shell uses HS2 protocol to uh, push the uh, queries to the uh, coordinators. So that's it, it's it's a bit easier to use the the old drift representation in uh, such cases. So uh, let's see how uh, Impala Daemon uh, works in the Impala cluster. So we have two modes for the Impala daemon, the coordinator mode and the executor mode. And we can run the Impala daemon, daemon in both modes. So uh, an Impala daemon can be an executor and a coordinator as well. The coordinator has a task to listen for the client requests, compile the queries, initiates and manages the distributed execution and streams back the results to the clients. The executors has a a uh, smaller but more important uh, role. So it runs the query fragments, communicates with e the other executors and reports back to the uh, coordinators.
Uh, at the architecture view, we will talk about how these different roles are uh, implemented. So all about the Impala daemon clients, we have uh, a small list of how we can communicate with uh, Impala uh, coordinator or Impala daemon. So the first class, the gold standard client is the, uh, the uh, Impala shell. Impala shell is uh, the part of the uh, project itself. So we, when we do some uh, changes to the project, we always uh, uh, implement it in the Impala shell as well. We have an external Python uh, library called Impala. It can also connect to the uh, Impala daemons. We have JDBC and ODBC drivers. Uh, these uh, drivers are developed by external uh, external companies, and uh, we can connect to uh, the Impala daemons through uh, another Apache product called Hue. Hue is a query uh, query, execu query execution solution. So we have a a nice uh, web view uh, where we can uh, execute queries and we can get the results back through view. Uh, I also listed the web UI, so Impala's web UI uh, in this uh, list. The web UI itself is, is more or less a diagnostic tool. We can see in the uh, left side the example of how uh, query execution is uh, mm, uh, looking in the web UI. Web UI can uh, list the uh, running queries, the already executed queries, the metrics about them, the memory usage, the startup values. So every every uh, diagnostic value that uh, we can uh, use uh, when we, we check how Impala works. And uh, it also uh, shows the query plan and the timeline of how the uh, query was executed. We have multiple ways for authentication. So we support the JWT authentication through Impala shell. We have a uh, Kerberos uh, option and LDAP option for Impala shell uh, as well. So let's go to the catalog daemon. So catalog daemon is also a part of the Impala cluster and the catalog daemon is responsible for uh, transmitting the metadata to the Impala daemons and the state store helps to broadcast these uh, informations. So the metadata itself is not stored uh, inside the Impala cluster. Uh, we are using a, a third-party solution, Hive's Metastore for uh, for this purpose. And uh, the Impala, sorry, the catalog daemon itself caches the metadata, so we don't have to uh, rely for Hive Metastore for every query. And we are using a lazy loading technique uh, in catalog daemon, so uh, we don't load every metadata. Uh, from the Hive Metastore, we just load what we uh, are using. So, so what, what the queries are uh, referring to, then we load the data and keep it uh, cached. So uh, in the uh, example, we can see that uh, Impala daemon itself has the ability to synchronize its uh, metadata view. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, so uh, Impala deployment has the ability to synchronize the, the view of how uh, metadata uh, changes through external systems. So if we have uh, an external system deployed our uh, cluster, for example, Hive, and Hive does some metadata change to the Hive Metastore, the Hive Metastore uh, can be paused uh, and this uh, event can be uh, replicated to Impala's uh, cluster and we always see a fresh metadata. Uh, we have uh, another approach for that when we don't know uh, how the uh, metadata changed and the external system is not using Hive Metastore to synchronize the data. In this case, we can reload from scratch the metadata for each table. And we have an incremental way and a zero to 100 way uh, for doing that. So about state store and admission daemon, uh, these are uh, small components uh, uh, and state store is for the uh, health check service of the cluster and uh, in knows topics uh, about the metadata and the cluster state and shares these informations between the Impaladis and catalog D. And we have the admission daemon and admission daemon is uh, responsible for uh, setting up uh, resource pools and uh, limiting the uh, usage by uh, various metrics. So for example, if we have uh, multiple users or multiple user groups, we can set up uh, distinct 
resource pools and set upper limits on, for example, for the concurrent queries and for the uh, maximum memory usage. Impala itself has a number of integrations with uh, other Apache products. So, uh, for example, uh, we have a storage integration with HDFS. That's the, the classical uh, implementation or the classical uh, integration with the storage solution. We also support Ozone and we also support cloud storages. So S3 and ABFS is also uh, supported, uh, but in the cloud scenario, uh, we couldn't really rely on the, uh, the data locality. So the uh, deployed Impala uh, daemons couldn't really use the local uh, fetching for data. So we uh, operating with remote reads, but we have uh, a caching, a data caching mechanism to, uh, uh, to make it a bit uh, faster. We also have uh, integration with Ranger, so we can set up uh, fine-grained access control for our tables and the table rows and for our database as well. And we support a bunch of uh, table and file formats. For table formats, Iceberg is uh, the first one and that I uh, would uh, list because it uh, has a main focus currently in, in Impala's development. Hood is also supported, Kudu and HBase uh, as well. And for the file formats, Park is the first class citizen, ORC and Avro is also supported and we can write uh, plain text files with different encodings and it's true for the uh, other uh, types of uh, file formats so we can write uh, a bunch of encodings for, uh, write and read a bunch of encodings for the uh, other types uh, as well. So let's go to the architecture view. So uh, in the uh, logical view for the metadata, uh, we have the state store daemon and the catalog daemon. The catalog daemon has a strong connection to Hive's metastore and HDFS name node and for, uh, with, uh, Ranger is uh, also in the uh, metadata layer. So Ranger is used for uh, the uh, access control uh, validation. For the next layer, we have the execution layer and we can see that Impala daemons are listed here uh, as well. So we split the execution into two parts. We have a front-end part and the back-end part. The front-end part is uh, mainly responsible for the query planning and uh, the coordination. This part of the code is written in Java and we use uh, JNI to communicate uh, through the back-end to the front-end. And the backend part is uh, written in C++ and the uh, query executors and uh, uh, the scheduling part of the code is uh, lying in uh, the backend part. For the storage layer, we have uh, no orange component uh, in this row uh, because we uh, always uh, relying on uh, external solutions. Impala itself has, uh, had, has no uh, storage solution. So we, uh, we use HDFS. S3, ADLS, HBase, or Kudu for uh, storage solutions. We have the uh, integrations with uh, the storages, so the the handling of these storages are in uh, Impala. But the the uh, the current logic how we uh, store data is is not there in uh, Impala. Uh, any questions so far? No. Okay, then let's continue. So uh, let's talk about the front end a little bit. So the front end itself is uh, uh, doing the query scanning, the lexing and the parsing part. And uh, we have a semantic analysis for the abstract syntax tree created from the uh, incoming query. We do reference matching from the metadata. So we locate the tables, the uh, columns of the tables and we do the uh, validation and authorization through Ranger. And we do uh, rewritings for optimizations. These rewritings can be seen at the uh, execution level. Uh, and the end of the uh, front end is the execution plan creation. So when we have the analyze statement, we create a single node execution plan. The single node execution plan consists of query fragments and uh, plan nodes. And after that, uh, if we have a distributed uh, setup, and this, that, that's the, uh, the default case, 
then we create a distributed plan from the single node plan, but the single node plan is uh, executable as well. The distributed plan has the properties of, uh, uh, it has a multiple uh, exchange nodes where each query fragment can uh, uh, push uh, its uh, results to the uh, next step. We will see some uh, examples uh, about it uh, in the next slide. So an example about the query, that's just a very uh, simple query and uh, how it's uh, going through the uh, analyzation part and the execution part uh, through Impala. So uh, we have the tokenized, uh, tokenized setup in the uh, second line and we can see with different colors the uh, the last uh, uh, words. So each color means a different uh, different kind of uh, uh, keyword or identifier. In the Aztec syntax tree, we can see that the query was uh, uh, analyzed. So we have a select statement with two select list items, even time and product ID. We have a from close, which refers to a sales table. And we have a where close, which uh, contains an in predicate, which refers to product ID as a slot reference, and we have two numerical uh, literals. And in the query plan, I cheated a bit because it's the uh, final final result of a query execution. So the executors uses this kind of plan uh, when uh, when when they execute the uh, query fragments. Uh, so we can see that the uh, first part is to scan the HDFS. Uh, scan the sales table in three instances and the predicates are pushed down to the scale uh, sorry for the scan node uh, we can see that the product id in uh, predicate is uh, available at this level and we have the second node the exchange node where we combine the results from the uh, scan nodes and this uh, exchange node uh, forwards the results to the sync and the sync in this case was the uh, impala shell where i executed this uh, simple query Let's go to the uh, backend part. So the backend was uh, the backend is uh, responsible for the first processing of the query fragments. Uh, it can happen in uh, multiple ways. So uh, we have an uh, intranode uh, multi-threading mode. Uh, so we can have multiple query fragment instances as well. But uh, in the uh, the classical way, we uh, execute each query fragment. Uh, distributed to each uh, node. The query execution itself is uh, almost uh, fully pipelineable, so uh, we have no stops or we have uh, we have stops, uh, for example, for source because uh, at source we have to wait uh, for uh, average results from the uh, underlying nodes. But if we uh, don't have uh, blocking nodes, we can stream the results from the scans to the sync uh, without stop. We have the ability to spill the disk. So when we have a big table uh, loaded in and we uh, are doing, uh, for example, joining and the uh, probe side uh, couldn't fit into the memory, we can write it to the disk and process it part by part. Uh, and about the uh, execution uh, of uh, various operators, we have uh, a lot of options here so uh, we can uh, uh, we can execute uh, the scans, uh, what uh, we already uh, see. We can execute the joins, the unions, the uh, aggregations, sorts, uh, top and an analytical uh, nodes uh, as well. And all of these uh, nodes are uh, mapped in, into the uh, backend part of the code and uh, have a, a special implementation to run these uh, kind of nodes. Uh, we use code generation for make it more efficient. So when we get an expression of uh, nodes, uh, we can see it in the uh, right example. So uh, when we get this uh, expression tree, we have a lot of virtual calls and function pointers in the uh, scope of execution. But with LLVM, we can make it uh, really fast because if we interpret this code uh, and uh, we write an LLVM uh, IR uh, instead of the virtual calls, we can uh, replace the the virtual calls with a simple uh, simple arith arithmetic uh, uh, expressions, and this kind of uh, switch or this kind of swap can speed up the uh, the execution a lot. 
So mainly these uh, optimizations are applied on the hot code paths, but uh, it also can happen that uh, a more uh, complex uh, part of uh, the code is uh, uh, swapped by LLVM uh, JIT combined code. We also use the short circuit local reads in the executors. Uh, this is the feature of uh, no, uh, unfortunately, no. I just uh, saw the question. Uh, uh, mm, yeah, uh, the question uh, about the short uh, circuit local reads. Unfortunately, we couldn't use it in the cloud environment. It's uh, it's working for the classical uh, way. So when the impeller daemon itself lives in the same node, same uh, uh, compute node as the uh, data node itself, and uh, in this case, we can uh, ask the data node to give us the uh, file descriptor and. In this case, we can uh, write, uh, sorry, read the uh, files. But in the cloud scenario, when we are talking to uh, S3 or ABFS, we don't have this kind of uh, data locality, unfortunately. And uh, as far as I know, the, the cloud providers don't really have a solution for that uh, yet. So uh, an example about the backend execution. So we have a, another uh, simple query. We can see the query summary in the middle, uh, and we can see that the uh, execution times are uh, decreasing as we are uh, going uh, upwards. So the scans are the uh, most time consuming uh, operations and the exchanges are uh, a bit faster and the, uh, the root fragments uh, uh, sync uh, operator itself has the uh, fastest uh, time. On the right side, we can see the uh, query plan for this simple query. It's uh, uh, it's just the same as we already said in the front end example. We can see the scan HDFS runs in three uh, instances, and it was uh, combined into one instance at the uh, exchange node with the F1 uh, uh, fragment. In the timeline, we can see that the scan uh, HDFS started first and uh, provided the first batch uh, in the uh, last line. And in the uh, second uh, line, we can see that the sender starts to send the uh, batches to the exchange and the exchange starts to uh, receive the first batches uh, after uh, that. And uh, when it receives the first batch, it uh, forwards it to the root sync uh, as well. So we can see the streaming, uh, streaming method of uh, uh, reading the data uh, from the table. So let's see another example uh, about the query plan. It's just for fun. So uh, the 142 node of uh, uh, plan nodes uh, are listed on the uh, right side and we can see the, the timeline of the query execution as well. It's an example from the TPCDS uh, query set. It's a, a decision-making uh, system benchmark. And yeah, that's a, that's a quite a big query plan. We can do uh, such things with Impala. Uh, so let's go to the next slide. And about the metadata and the uh, storage, uh, I have a little uh, thing to uh, say because we don't really uh, handle the, the storage of the data. We are using the external services to store the data, but we, we know how to write to external uh, solutions. So for example, in the example, uh, in the right side, we can see uh, on the uh, left part, it's uh, a Hive tables uh, example, and the right part, it, it's uh, Iceberg's uh, solution for uh, handling the metadata and the data file uh, writing. So uh, about iceberg stable format, uh, we can see that the uh, metadata storing and the data file storing itself is happening on the object store, uh, while on the uh, Hive table solution, the metadata itself lives in the Hive's uh, metastore. Impala can uh, handle both kind of uh, metadata or both kind of uh, table formats. And uh, uh, I will talk uh, briefly about Iceberg in the uh, next slide. So currently we are uh, implementing uh, Iceberg features in Impala and uh, we are committed to uh, implement every uh, new feature that uh, Iceberg adds to its uh, format. So now we are supporting the basic reading and writing. We support the schema evolution, the partition uh, layout evolution as well. We support the cool uh, time travel feature 
is just the uh, snapshot uh, jumping feature. We also support the rollback and the migration from uh, Hive tables, and we also support the positional delete. Uh, I will talk in the uh, uh, I will talk briefly about these features in the demo. So uh, I think the next one uh, is the demo. So let's go through uh, the demo. Uh, Peter, before starting the demo, I think I can see one message at chat. I'm not sure that you have already addressed that. Uh, yes, uh, I think I answered this question uh, when we uh, were at the uh, backend part uh, and I started to talk about the short circuit read. But uh, if it was not uh, okay, then um, I can talk about it again. Or Rajesh, uh, what do you know? It, uh, what do you think? It, it was okay. The answer. It, it was okay. I just want you to know if it didn't support it. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, then let's let's go with the demo. Okay. So for the first image, what we see is a Caldera solution for uh, Impala managed solution. So uh, Cloudera Data Warehouse uh, is uh, mm, available in the public and the private cloud uh, uh, portfolio of Cloudera, and it has a, a managed solution for Apache Impala. It uh, is hosted in Kubernetes, and we can uh, have the, uh, the we can uh, use the uh, scaling uh, uh, properties of uh, Apache Impala. So uh, uh, we can set how many nodes and how many uh, executors and how many uh, catalogs we, we are we would like to use uh, with this solution. And uh, I created the demo in this product, and uh, we can uh, walk through uh, about the uh, available uh, features uh, shortly. So we can uh, configure the uh, virtual warehouse configurations. We can check the timeline and uh, we can go to the web UIs that I uh, showed uh, previously. But uh, let's go to the uh, demo itself. So uh, we can uh, query Apache Impala through Hue uh, with uh, Cloudera uh, Data Warehouse. So we are in Hue and uh, we will have a demo table called uh, Sales. So uh, Sales Tables definition is uh, here. Uh, this table is uh, partitioned by product ID and uh, store ID, and it's a Hive table. It has uh, nearly 1 billion uh, rows, and the uh, files, the data files are stored in Parquet format. So we can see the uh, partitions uh, in the table. It's the uh, classical way, the Hive table uh, partitioning uh, solution. And we can see a summary uh, about the product ID 58. That's for the uh, demo, demo's purpose. So we will follow through this uh, product ID and uh, we will check how the uh, various uh, manipulations will uh, change the uh, counts about uh, the product ID 58. So we can see that store C and store D has the uh, uh, row counts for the product ID 58. And let's convert this uh, Hive table to a nice web table. So uh, this conversion itself is just a metadata change. So we don't have to rewrite every uh, data file and every partition for this uh, conversation. Uh, so uh, conversion. And uh, in, in some mm, uh, seconds, we will have a successful uh, migration. Yes, the table is migrated. And if we check the uh, numbers again, we will see the uh, same result. So yes, the, the row comments are the same, and we have the uh, partitions as well, but in a different format. So now we can see that the partition uh, itself is written in a JSON. That's because the uh, the metadata was rewritten into Iceberg's format, and the partition information now is stored uh, in Iceberg's uh, metadata. So we can see the another partitions, and uh, let's describe next time the history of our table because now we have a history with the hive tables we don't have this uh, ability so uh, every change uh, is uh, creating uh, no uh, trace of uh, the history but with iceberg tables we have a history and we can see that the first snapshot id is uh, just 
created and has no parent ID, uh, but we, it will change in the next steps. So let's ingest some data into the table. And it's, uh, it's about the product ID 58, and we will see in the uh, next, uh, next comments. But first, let's describe the history. We can see we have a new uh, snapshot ID. A new snapshot is added to our metadata and has the parent ID of the previous uh, snapshot. So let's query the summary again, but with a different manner. So now we have two snapshots. So we can say uh, to uh, Impala to query the sales table as the version of the previous snapshot. And we can see that it's a, it's a union query, and we can uh, see that we have the before ingestion state and the after ingestion state in one query. So we can see that after the ingestion store B has uh, appeared. So in the next uh, command, let's check the uh, partitions and how they changed. So we can see that for product ID 58, I, uh, I know that the store ID 8 is the newly added uh, partition. It's not uh, really representative, but we can see that a new, uh, new partition is uh, added. So let's alter the table and change the partition spec. Uh, in this partition spec, we will use the months transform. It's a new feature by uh, Iceberg. So uh, previously, with Hive tables, if you would like to do some months-based partitioning, we have to extract the months data from our uh, date column and store it in a different way, as a string, for example. But with uh, Iceberg, we can uh, have these kind of transforms, uh, which uh, is the feature of the uh, hidden partitioning. This months transform will uh, have the uh, ability to hide the, this kind of uh, data extraction. So the data extraction, so the months uh, part uh, is extracted uh, when we insert new data, and we don't have to create manually a new uh, partition uh, column about the months. This, uh, uh, this transform will handle this case. And it's uh, updated, so let's ingest the data again. And we will see in the partitions that new kind of partition has just appeared in the list. At the end, we will see that sale date months partition is added. So our data is split uh, between these two months. This uh, uh, integer value itself is the uh, number of months passed since the icebergs uh, epoch time. So it's just a, an internal representation how the uh, date uh, partitioning uh, works. But we can see that we don't have to rewrite the other partitions. We have uh, heterogeneous parti partitioning, so we have two kind of uh, partition specs in one uh, table. So let's check the history again, and we will see that we have three uh, snapshots, and the linkage of them are still in place. And let's change back the partitioning with the original partition spec. And let's ingest the data. So now if we check the, the partitions, we will see that the partition spec itself was restored to the original one, and we will have one more file for the uh, the original product ID 58 and store ID 8 uh, partition. So on the right side, you can see that the number of files is two, so we use the old, old uh, partitioning spec. So uh, in the next part, uh, oh, not first, at, let's query the uh, new data and see that the data itself was uh, merged, so we don't see any difference between the uh, partitions. It's uh, fully seamless for the uh, queries. So we have the uh, row counts of the uh, previous ingestions and nothing is missing. So now let's uh, alter the table schema and add the new flag called 
uh, sorry, add the new column called flag. It's a Boolean uh, column. And we will give the true default value for this uh, column in just some data for it. And let's query and check how the uh, row counts are changed. And we will see that a new uh, entry is uh, appeared and we uh, see that the flagged true is uh, appeared. So after that, let's drop this column and add it again. And ingest some data with another default value. So now not uh, with true, but with false. And let's see what will be the result. With high tables, we have a different, uh, different annoying uh, behavior, I think. But with iceberg, we will have what we would like to see. So if we query the data for the product ID 58, we will see that only false is here. So that's because the uh, schema evol evolution uh, happens to work in iceberg in a way that if we have uh, the uh, same name uh, for, so sorry, for the, if we have, if, if we add the column uh, with named flag and drop it and add it again, it will be not the same column. So we have a, a version or a, a different uh, identity for these columns and uh, we can uh, search for this data. So if we uh, go through the history and search for the uh, uh, snapshot ID with the, uh, um, before the drop, we can query the data and see the flag as uh, true, but that's a different state of our table. Our, our current state uh, only uh, contains the uh, the flag column as, uh, as as with false value, and we don't see the zombie, the old uh, column, uh, which we already dropped before uh, the newly added column. So uh, Iceberg can easily handle the uh, zombie data problem we don't see the uh, old uh, unneeded data. So uh, let's check the history again. We did a lot of changes. So we will have uh, a bunch of new snapshots. We can see that we have six snapshots now. And uh, for the next part, let's inspect uh, how the query was executed. We will see uh, some uh, optimizations here. So we see the uh, query plan for the uh, summary uh, query. And we can see in the line uh, 25 that we have a skipped iceberg predicate for the product ID equals uh, 58. It, uh, it's here because uh, with iceberg, when we first uh, plan the files, so when we start the query, we do uh, file planning and iceberg uh, uh, filters the uh, data files uh, through the expressions pushed down to it. So we give the product ID equals 58 uh, uh, expression to Iceberg and Iceberg knows by the metadata that the product ID is a partition column and can filter the data files uh, for this uh, expression. And Impala itself don't have to filter the files uh, read from S3 uh, anymore. So we only have to read from S3 we don't have to apply any filters through the scanning. And that's a, that's a quite uh, optimization for, uh, for iceberg tables and it can uh, fasten up the scans uh, a lot. And it can be uh, applied for uh, various uh, expressions as well, not just for equals, but for impredicates and, uh, and so on. So in the next part, uh, I will restore uh, what we uh, what we manipulated in the previous part. So I use the uh, first snapshot ID and I will roll back the table for the first uh, state. And we will see in the history that we will have a new entry, which will be uh, pointing to the first snapshot and it will have no parent ID. So we are at starting point. All of the changes that uh, we did to the table are uh, in the uh, in the version history, but we return to the first uh, snapshot. And if we check the partitioning and check the summary, we will see no uh, store B, and we have the same number of partitions as it was in the uh, it, it was at, uh, after the uh, table conversion. So in the summary, we will see that no store B is in the list. 
So that was the uh, demo for uh, Impala with Iceberg. If you have uh, any questions, please ask and thank you for your time. Hi, I have a question. Um, yeah. yeah, I've noticed that there's no hitching for catalog uh, store. Um, can you explain why we don't hitching and what happens in the catalog store goes store? Uh, we have uh, an AJ mode in Cloudera solution. So uh, when catalog itself is uh, down, yes, uh, it, that's not a, uh, not a good scenario. Uh, and uh, in this case, uh, I think we can only resort to the uh, restore and uh, read everything uh, again from the uh, Hive Metastore. Um, but as I mentioned in Cloudera solution, we have a failover for catalog. So we can run uh, two uh, catalog demons uh, at once with one uh, failover. So if uh, something happens to the uh, leader, then it will fail over to the uh, second one. So yeah, it, it's, uh, uh, it's solved in Cloudera's distribution. Ah, okay. So in the new book, I thought at some version it didn't have a uh... Uh, HJ, like, but right now it has. You can have two catalog demons and state source. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, with Cloudera's distribution, we can uh, have multiple. So we, we can have okay. an AJ setup, high, highly, available, a highly available setup, yes. Okay, yep, thanks. All right, any questions? Yeah, I have one question. Hello. Hi. Uh, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. So once we talk about the iceberg, uh, and as we know, it is uh, G with our uh, 719. So what are those use cases uh, which are predominantly used uh, for the iceberg where we can project that yes, iceberg is going to give you the value and you should implement that? Uh... I think I'm maybe short on this question because I don't uh, really know how uh, the customers should use uh, Iceberg. I show the the pain points what uh, Iceberg can solve, and I think uh, a lot of use cases uh, around uh, partitioning and uh, uh, schema uh, changes can be uh, managed by Iceberg. What uh, was a uh, a bit annoying with Hive tables, and uh, I think the uh, the performance itself is can be better uh, with uh, Iceberg table formats as well. So if we, uh, I I don't really uh, talked about the uh, the possibilities of uh, the uh, deletes and the updates, but uh, for now. Uh, Impala itself just supports one uh, delete mechanism, but in the future we would like to support both delete mechanisms and the merge on read and the uh, copy on write uh, updating mechanisms as well. And I think these features uh, should be uh, the uh, the deal breakers with the iceberg. So so they are uh, they are providing. Uh, a, a, a much more better way to, to handle the uh, the data updates and the, the data manipulation. And I think this is the the most important part. Okay, fine. So as we know that schema evolution is something that uh, yeah, is uh, well maintained by the iceberg. But at the same time, once we talk about the time series data, and we always said that uh, iceberg is good in the time series related data. So how uh fast or how good it is when we are going to manage or uh, maintain that kind of data in the iceberg table and uh is it uh, like because everything is in json here so is it really faster as compared to the hive tables uh that's a good question so for the first part i i think uh for uh, time series uh, uh, data, so when we are ingesting with uh, small intervals, Iceberg is not the best solution uh, that we can use uh, in this uh, ecosystem. Uh, 
uh, if we have uh, a longer time of uh, ingestions, for example, uh, by days, uh, Iceberg can give us a, a good solution. But for the slowly changing dimension scenario, I think Iceberg is not the uh, mm, not the the best uh, approach. And uh, for the second part, so what we uh, gain uh, when we use Iceberg instead of Hive tables. Uh, I could uh, refer to the uh, previous question. So we have a, a, a bunch of uh, managed uh, things like the schema evolution and the partition evolution, and that's that's how we we could be uh, better and uh, use our data more comfortable. I think. Okay. And, uh, so for back back for the uh, time series, that I think Apache Kudu is more. Uh, uh, preferable for for this kind of uh, workload. Thank you, everyone.